Next question is from Lore Pat. What is your take on certain vegetables being toxic? Toxic. Is it BS or would we be better off not eating certain types? It has been going around that vegetables have natural defense mechanisms to protect themselves, but because of that, they can be harmful. All right, Paul, Paul so talks about natural this a lot. insecticides. Yeah. So there's some truth to this, but it's also been exaggerated. So I'm going to give you a uh, an analogy or another example that is going to sound ridiculous, but it isn't. Would you eat a cow while it's alive? So let's say a cow's alive and you're just starting to eat its leg. Would that be safe? <laughs> no, it'd be very dangerous because a cow's defense mechanisms are to kick you and bite you and probably kill you, right? It's a big-ass animal. So what do we do to the cow before we eat it? We kill it. Okay. Plants can't kick you. They can't bite you. They can't run away. So they produce toxins to uh, just, just to keep animals from eating them or to demotivate animals from eating them. Right. So what do we do to those plants? We cook them. We the grind them, them. We boil them. Yeah. Okay? So this is true, but also humans have adapted to be able to process vegetables and food so they can eat them. For example, eat a raw potato. You're, it's going to mess you up. You eat a raw potato, you are going to have ruined inflammation and digestive issues, and it could probably kill you. Who eats a raw potato? You boil the hell out of it. Then you eat mm -hmm. it, and you're okay. So. Mm -hmm. I, I get what they're saying with this. And yes, some of the toxins remain. And, and what I'm, I'm not talking about are the highly sensitive individuals mm -hmm. who obviously have autoimmune issues that are, ho or that are going on. Like Michaela Peterson was a great example. She had some autoimmune reactions. And so all of these plants were causing reactions in her. But most people, if you cook vegetables or you process them, like if you grab wheat out of the ground and chew on it, you're going you're gonna to shred your body. But if you mash it up and grind it and then cook it, then most people, or a lot of people, I should say, can can eat the sweet. So it is, there's some truth to this message, but what they've done is they've kind of twisted it and it's just not true well, for everybody. And, and here's, you'll always hear this message uh, talked a lot about in the, you know, keto and carnivore space. So if you're a, a pro all meat diet, <laughs> yeah. then you're going to highlight this all the time as like, but the... It, I do think there are people though, and I do yes. like something that Paul says as because I found this interesting because I never thought about this and looked at like what vegetables. I've actually never tried to eliminate certain vegetables in my diet, wondering if maybe it's causing some of my autoimmune issues until listening to Paul talk about this exact topic. And one of the things that he said that I found interesting was I thought, well, I'm not going to get rid of all vegetables, but I want to keep some stuff in there. And I don't, I obviously don't think that it's from all of these vegetables, but maybe it could be from some some outliers. And uh, your body, it's easier for your body to digest flowering parts yes. of vegetables versus like the stem. Yeah, because the, the plants protect uh, certain parts of it more right. than others. And it wants the, the fruits like the offering. That's yes. right. Here, here yeah. The, the animals come by, they, they nab that, and then it's like they leave it alone. Exactly. So if you're somebody who eats like a lot of asparagus and you eat the whole entire thing, you're the, the flowering part of, of vegetables are less likely to have these higher toxins and defense mechanisms from animals eating it. So maybe looking at that and going like, okay, what, what vegetables are like flower, have flowering? And there's truth to this. Like we don't need to cook and boil our fruit in order to eat it. You can right. eat a fruit raw. I can eat yeah, an apple right. raw. I can eat a strawberry raw. Um, asparagus, I'm sure if I just eat the tip raw, I'll be, I'll be a little better off than if I eat the, the bottom part or yeah. whatever. But that's why we cook and process. It's just, it's look. Here's the deal. It's why we cook meat too. Could I eat raw meat? You can eat raw meat. Why do humans cook meat? It allows our body. It, cooking meat actually. It's part of the digestion. It partially digests the yeah. food, unlocks a lot of the nutrients, and scientists, evolutionary scientists, strongly believe this is one of the reasons why our brains got so big. Mm -hmm. We were able to cook. This super, and yes, me, this is true now. Meat is the most nutrient dense food on the planet. If you're living in the wild, you're not, you're probably not going to survive just eating plants. It's not going to happen. You have to figure out how to grow on your, your own plants and create the right combination. You're going to die unless you catch some well, meat and then you're probably going to survive. Not to mention, plus, it, it lowers the risk factor with like, uh, you know, certain bacteria and parasites that totally. you could get uh, from the raw meat. So it's like, it's just one of those things we, f we hacked and Dude, figured I out. I figured out for myself, look, I have gut issues, okay? I figured out for myself that 
lots of vegetables help with my gut issues, but I have to cook them really well. You guys have seen how I eat them, right? Yeah. I boil the crap out of them. Yeah. Then I can eat them and they actually help my digestion. If I eat raw vegetables, sometimes they can bother me. But I mean, we've been processing foods forever, just like we do with meat. Just like I said, like the same example would be, you know, eating an animal while it's alive. Very dangerous, but I got to kill it and cook it. And now I can eat it. Yeah. Plants, you know, this is why the raw vegan movement to me is very interesting because they're taking out that element. And I know some people can get away with it, but I don't know. Have you ever tried to eat lots and lots of raw vegetables? Ugh. It'll it'll wreck your gut very you quickly. You're talking about having trapped gas, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I would explode. Now, that doesn't mean, too, though, that there's not value in somebody who is dealing with autoimmune issues. Totally. And they've tried different things to eliminate, and they can't get to the bottom of it. And totally. They're, and, they've been, and that's why I, I, this, this conversation does need to be had, and I think it's important because – you don't think vegetables, just like I'm sure Doug probably didn't think avocado was, you know, causing issues with his skin and stuff like that. You think it's a healthy food. Everyone talks about yes. it's a super food. It's so, it's so great for us. So if you have this really good diet um, and avocado is a part of that or asparagus is a part of that, and it's just, you don't think of, you think of it as a health food. You don't think that it's p possibly flaring up my psoriasis or causing my other auto autoimmune stuff I have going on. And so if you're trying to get to the bottom of that, and then you hear a message like this, like, hey, not a bad strategy to potentially eliminate that veg a, a vegetable that you eat all the time that could be do dealing doing that. If you're an average person and you're healthy and you don't have any autoimmune issues, then this means nothing to you. Yeah. And you're you know what, you're right, because we also we always need to consider because generally speaking, we can list foods by more or less healthy, depending on the nutrients and what they provide us. But you can't ignore your individual body. That's you right. cannot do that. Like I've had I, I have had to learn this lesson with clients over and over to the point where I finally gave in and said, everybody's different. And I remember having a client yeah. that it, it was meat. Meat did not make them meat, feel good. I think you share a banana one, right? I had a client. Like avocado who, over here. I mean, these are foods that you yeah. consider very healthy. That's right. Spinach. And, yeah. That's right. And at one point, I remember thinking dairy. Oh, dairy's bad. We're not meant to drink milk. But you look at the literature and you look at when people don't have intolerance to dairy and you realize it's one of the healthiest foods ever, unless- you react to it like I do. I can't have dairy, right? right? So you have to consider general what's healthy and then your individual body. Do not ignore your individual body because it can be almost anything that'll bother you.